thank you for tuning in to Metal Express Radio. Joining us now is Zach Stevens from Circle to Circle. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so yeah. tell us about the new Circle to Circle album coming out in April. It's called Delusions of Grandeur. It is the uh, fourth one. And um, it's a little bit different. And uh, took a different approach on it, different recording approach. I kind of changed my formula and went up to Orlando and found... Uh, nice house in the middle of a real ritzy neighborhood belonging to Jay Stanley who works with Creed and they just did the Seven Dust album in that house and um, he um, wrote 3 a.m. Uh, by Matchbox 20 and um, I said you know what we're gonna take Circle Circle we're gonna admit we're gonna do this record and we're gonna mix it like everything that's cutting edge right now that he works on so you know I I think it's a good change. I like what we did at Mars Sound last three records. It's good, you know, that's what, that was great. Now when you do three, it's time for a little twist. So, um, you know, it, and judging from what happened, it was the right move because it just took it to a whole new level and uh, I think it's gonna be a pretty good surprise. Well, we're excited to hear it. Thank you. So we heard a rumor about Lord of the Rings and a little side project. Do you yeah. wanna tell us a little bit about that? Well, yeah, I, there's a, it's called Archangel is the production company out of Italy. And a producer named Gabriel said, do you wanna be part of this Lord of the Rings album, which each um, character in the Lord of the Rings trilogy is kind of featured in musical form. Hmm. So he goes, why don't you be Sauron, the lidless eye, the most <laughs> evil guy in the whole thing? I said, but if you know me, you'll know that I'm not quite the evil guy and I don't really fit that bill. Ah, you know, just turn it on and use your acting ability. So. Did a song called Lidless Eye and The Power Within and just recorded it last week in two nights uh, with uh, Mark uh, and uh, the guy that I do all my vocal tracks with. And I cut the vocals to the rec to the album, by the way, in Ybor City because I could not really... When you talk about driving to Orlando and uh, to do vocals, that's a different story because, you know, you can get your guitar players there and say, 10 hours for you today, go. It doesn't work that way with vocals. I do like a song every night for a fresh perspective, you know, and then I come in and do like two more days on them, every song. So I have to be local. And since I live in like Brandon Valrico area, I do my vocals for the album in Ebor at Red Room Recorders with Mark Prater, who used to work with Mars Sound, actually did record Edge of Thorns. He recorded, uh, he recorded Chris Oliva's, all of Chris Oliva's guitar tracks pretty much for Edge of Thorns. So we're talking about a long history awesome. um, that I met through Sabotage. So it was good to have that family come back and it all just felt right on this record because a lot of great friends were brought back into the team and uh, turned out good. So what's next on the touring scene for Circle to Circle? We're gonna do a six uh, shows in Brazil in June and that's already booked. It's June 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, something like that. Um, and then we're gonna go out with uh, John Oliva's Pain in America. God, can you believe America again? I think it's been, I don't even wanna say how many years, I'm not even gonna say it since I toured America, but we're, it's going to be amazing, and a lot of history there with that bill. Um, I think Manicor is another band that they're going to put out, a European band. Um, so that'll be in September, running into October, like two or three weeks in the state. So for starters, I mean, you're going to go out there and do that, and then we'll build on it from there. We're going to do Japan. Got a new deal in Japan, and we gave them the record a month early and everything. You know, you're going to have to give them some extra stuff. But we enjoy taking care of Japan. They get to release my album a month earlier, and they got two extra tracks. Uh, they're demanding, but you know what? Give it to them, and let's get it going in Japan. You know, so we did 13 songs all together, so we were able to kind of carve out some stuff, and we got five album versions going out of Delusions of Grandeur, um, a regular version in the U.S. in Europe, the deluxe version, special Japanese version, and two EPs, one for America, one for Europe, five songs each, with uh, an edit of one of the songs that was seven minutes and 39 seconds. So you better edit it, right? <laughs> So you had a chance to listen to one pre-production song from Doctrine. What, what do you think about it? Awesome. I love it. I mean, very fresh, a lot of potential. I mean, I see, you know, the sky being the limit. I love it. I mean, bring it on. I want to get more familiar with it. I just got to hear a little bit, uh, you know, but I got to get more familiar with all the songs. Great job. So which song did you choose to have spun on Metal Express Radio and why? Well, I kind of went back to my childhood, and you know, I'll probably date myself on this, but I grew up in the 80s. Big uh, surprise. And when you're a teenager in the 80s, uh, you know, what is out there, okay? So um, I'm from South Carolina, 
Everybody in my band is from Nashville, Tennessee, with the exception of Andy, uh, a lead guitar player who's from Biloxi, Mississippi. So we're pretty much seeing that we're, we've got some metal southern rock. I know that sounds kind of strange, but on this new album, I've got like three or four songs where it just seemed like it was a three-part puzzle. We've got this new metal southern rock thing happening with us, but I don't think it can be, uh, it really can't be um, gotten away from because it is so inherent in where we're from. We are from the south, we're southern boys. It's starting to come out now, but that's okay because it kind of metamorphosized into something special. So I figured I would go back to what really captured me um, back when I was a kid, and that is Molly Hatchet because that's when I first started playing those cover tunes in my bands. And that was, being that we were from the South, growing up in South Carolina, it just, you know, hits home a little bit more when you, you know, you talk about Southern rock, that was it, and I was living that. So, I chose the song Flirting with Disaster, because that was one of the, you know, gosh, when it first came out, I think I had to play that in four different cover bands, so. Um, but it was a big influence on me. And, you know, that guitar, that wall of guitar is pretty much what I was able to kind of more capture on Delusions of Grandeur, so it definitely was an influence in that respect. All right, let's go ahead and roll that track. And when we come back, we'll visit with John Oliva's Payne. <laughs> 